Hello, good afternoon. My name is Abdullah. I'm currently a fourth year student studying computing, digital forensics, and cybersecurity at Technological University Dublin, Blanchardstown campus. And the topic of my final year project is a 3D visualization malware for classification. So firstly, uh, what is cybersecurity? The cybersecurity is basically about defending networks and programs uh, from digital threat cyber attacks, typically while dealing with confidential information and resources system or both of those. So the most important thing is that creating efficient security strategies uh, is difficult, especially when they are more and they are improving their own skills at the same time. So the cybersecurity improves its own skill at the same time while dealing with the confidential information. And also the cybersecurity is important because government, military, corporate, financial and medical organization collect, process and store unpresented amount of data on computer and other uh, devices. Uh, secondly, just let's give uh, an, a quick overview about the, the threats. Uh, so the, the threats, the, there are two types of threats. They are web based and they are an online threats. And there are different categories of cyber risk that may cause an undesirable event or action via the internet. So speaking more about the web threats are made possible by end user uh, vulnerabilities and web services developers, operators, or the web services uh, themselves, regardless of the intent or the cause. And the consequences of web threat may damage both individual and uh, organization. And generally the term uh, of threats applies, but it's not limited to a network based threats. And there are different categories of, uh, of the malware can be, such as private network threats, uh, host threats and uh, web uh, server. And the last question is how to prevent uh, from uh, malware. Actually, it's a bit tricky question how to how the malware can be uh, how, how the malware can be detected. Sorry, sorry. The, the tricky question is how to detect the malware. So because of the nature of the malware can't be seen uh, on the system and uh, that, as I said, because that's the nature of the malware, which cannot be seen uh, on the system because it's hides into the roots of the system sometime, sometime and by somehow. But there are some basic ways to detect the malware, such as using an antivirus software and also by noticing different actions uh, done by your computer, for example, running slow or popping up uh, ads, or also uh, receiving a random links via the email or spams. So dealing and identifying different malware families can be difficult even while using an antivirus application. So my proposed solution will improve the procedure of identifying the malwares and classify them easily by matching the figured features and extract them in order to classify them. So the first step of uh, so the, this project goes into a different phases, for, for, but the first phase is like we get the malware file and for instance, if it's for uh, a testing purpose, we are going to download from an open source website such as virus share or virus total and we get the malware file. The malware file is basically a file that consists of malicious codes and after that we use by using the Python. I'm sure uh, maybe maybe some of us doesn't know what does Python mean, but the Python is a programming language which can create a scripts and very powerful uh, tools and we change them to a binaries and the binaries is a computer uh, text. It's consist numbers and also consists of letters like for example, one zero one zero or zero one and also there are uh, letters. So after that we convert the binaries to an RGP image. The RGP uh, stand for uh, red, green and blue. And in that's in this uh, stage, the image is going to be at a grayscale color, so we are not going to see much of the code or, or sorry of the malware on, on this stage. And after that, we are going to slice uh, the, the values we got to a matrix of 3D, uh, 3 by 3, 3D in RGP. And after we slice the values into a matrix of 3, three by three, we are going to convert it to a 3D malware shape. And after we convert it to a 3D malware shape, then we are going to the phase, which is the final phase, 
uh, the visualization uh, phase. <coughs> Just speaking, uh, discussing more about the proposed solution. For example, if we are having a malware information at, as a hash, so we are slicing the informations to our X and Y coordinates. Uh, for example, we are having here 37 and 57, and then we are slicing those information into uh, an, a matrix, an image matrix, like as I said, the RGP, we are using an RGP. So after we slice them to a matrix and we are going to in, insert them to X and Ys, those are going to, re, to be represented as a 3D shape. I'm sure it's, I hope it's, uh, sorry, it's, it's, it's still not clear how the shape is going to be, but on the upcoming slide, I'm going to to discuss and uh, and view some examples how the the findings and the outcomes of this uh, project for, for the sorry so for the experiments and results, the results we are uh, approaching now that. As I said, we have converted the binary to an RGP color, and on the right hand side of the presentation, we have an image that which shows a malicious code as a byte. Uh, it's not a very clear uh, image, but it shows like there's a white, red, and green uh, colors, which are those are the, the malwares themselves. And after that, we transform uh, the binaries to a matrix, and this is called the signal transformation method. And the last method is generating the 3D shape, which I'm going to discuss on the upcoming slide. So here we are having a two different malware families, like we are having a Trojan and Adware. The Trojan is a name of a malware and also the Adware. So at the first image at the right, left hand side of the presentation, we can see that we are having the Trojan and also on the on the image, which is at the middle, we can see uh, also a Trojan and they are sharing the some exact features highlighted with a circle. Uh, so by noticing those, we can. Uh, classify those Trojan as they are from the same family, so those malwares are from the same family, but on the other hand, the adware is completely different. Uh, there is no, they are not sharing the same features and the texture is different. But just let's make it uh, simpler by uh, giving an example, which is uh, COVID. Like for example, if we, if, let's pretend or imagine that the COVID is a, a, a malware, a computer malware, and we want to identify and classify if them, if, if another virus is uh, from a family of uh, of a COVID. So we insert uh, the malware to the script, the Python script, and it's going to generate a 3D image and shows the feature. Uh, if we have the same features, if we get the same features, then uh, then those those two uh, malwares uh, are under the same uh, family. So for conclusion and further work, at the moment, it's a bit hard to understand the script. So for the future work, uh, what I'm planning to do is developing a graphical user interface, which includes a button and an upload uh, buttons to upload like the virus and visualize it uh, easily. And also at the moment, uh, uh, the scripts can deal only with one uh, malware file at a time. But in the near future, I am hoping to develop uh, the the scripts uh, so it can deal with more than one uh, malware family, uh, malware file at a time. And also, in, for the future work, I will try to compare the 3D image statistically. So it's going to measure the distance between each point at the graph and shows uh, the difference. And also, as, as a conclusion, most malware uh, classification mechanism must be observed or decompiled, and that's what makes it hard uh, to classify and identify uh, the malware. And using a 3D visualization, uh, we can get comparable outcomes and better performance, as I showed, showed you at uh, the previous slides uh, for the experiments and the results. So, if anyone is interested to read about the malwares and the classification, here are some of the or some of the references. And thank you very much, and I'll be very happy to answer any questions.